So I finally made my final summer move uh, on So Rare. I'm actually quite excited about it, and we're going to talk about it today. So let's jump straight into it. Now, before we get into it, I do want to quickly say there might not be a huge amount of So Rare content on this channel, um, sort of in the next, I don't know, two weeks. So what I would advise doing is hopping over to my Twitter account and following me at It's Haber So Rare. There'll be a link in the description. Make sure to follow me on there because uh, whilst there might not be loads of videos on this channel because I'm, I'm, I'm heading out on vacation for two weeks uh, and like, although I'll be doing a little bit for the main channel, like if you guys don't know, I have a FIFA channel. That's like my main job. I won't be doing much for the So Rare channel. So I will be setting lineups. I will be trying to win rewards, stuff like that. But I'll obviously be, I'll, I'll be like, posting that on the so Red twitter account okay so make sure you follow me there basically is what i'm trying to say anyway i finally made my final move on uh for the summer um after a few sales and stuff like that we made a couple of moves and we're going to show you guys because i was trying to essentially build a gallery that made sense in different avenues right and then uh play the rest of the summer for that try and win some stuff that i can sell to then make some moves in europe as Europe comes back. And that's kind of what I'm hoping we're at right now. It's where I'm hoping we're at. Um, so let's sort of jump into it. Now, we are going to jump into it straight away and have a look at how we're doing this week. So, uh, All-Star Rare is kind of a throwaway. Uh, I'm really glad I didn't play Cobell there now because he actually conceded to Andorra. Um, this is a throwaway, though. Realistically, France... England, a couple of the nations have got ridiculously easy matchups. They're going to be so many 100-point scores. I really don't actually see myself winning a reward here. Like, the top 126 win a reward, and apparently 330 points will get you 322nd. And I don't think Russell Rowe or Yomi Doku start, so it's kind of impossible, right? But I thought, get some so coins, right? Um, but this is a good lineup for me. Um, I decided to put my best players in Champion America Rare Pro because the competition will be low. And I have some really good matchups here. So um, we have the Earthquake Boys against Portland at home, who Portland are actually decent. They're kind of finding a bit of form at the moment, I think. Um, or at least I've seen Evander be getting a couple of decisives here and there. So I imagine that's what it means. But yeah, I mean, well, you know, they drew 0-0 to Seattle Sounders. They lost 1-0 to Minnesota. There's definitely a clean sheet potential for the Earthquakes, I'm hoping. Um, we have Gil against Orlando and Ojeda against the Revs. I think in this in this uh, predicament, I think it, a high-scoring game would be awesome. I think Heal has definitely got 100-point potential against Orlando. Both teams are going to be relatively gutted with the, uh, you know, Revs won't have people like Jordi Petrovic and they still haven't got Kessler and people like that back. Um, I, I think Orlando are missing out on Torres, so Ojeda should start and a few other players here and there. So it should be really interesting to see. I'm excited. That's tonight. And then we have um, Saloy against LAFC, who are just terrible at the moment for some reason. And they've lost a bunch of their players to international duty. So I'm hoping that Kansas can do well and Saloy can get himself a couple of goals or assists. That'd be awesome. So I'm projected eighth. It pays down to 12th. Um, Eighth with 344 points. If we get a clean sheet with the Earthquakes, I think we're definitely within a really good chance of getting a reward. So tonight should be a lot of fun watching those games. Although 3.30 a.m. for the Earthquake game will be a little bit painful. But I'm excited for that. Nonetheless, let's go to the transaction page and show you guys through some of the things that we've done. Now, um, it kind of started with a sale. Now, I sold my Patrick Drews. I bought this card... Um, I actually made a video when I bought this card, right? I bought this card on the 20th of March, 2023 for £549, which at the time was 0 0.352 ETH. Um, he was at Sandhausen, who were likely getting relegated, and his contract was up at the end of the season. They did get relegated. His contract expired, and he's actually signed for KSC in the Bundesliga 2, who have just sold their number one goalkeeper, so he's likely to be number one. Now, I don't need another super rare goalkeeper. I have Fleckard, who's just gone to Brentford, and Guzan, who's at Atlanta. So, realistically, I don't intend on playing um, super rare in anything other than Cap 240, just because I don't really think I've got the pieces to do that when Europe comes back. So Flecken will be the only goalie I need and he'll be a cap 240 goalkeeper. Um, so I sold him. I sold him for 0.66, almost made double my money. And, and you know what? I maybe could have made a little bit more, but what I've learned over the last few days of trying to purchase certain players is that I think a lot of Serie managers can be a bit greedy and a bit entitled sometimes. And that's not a shot at you guys that watch the video. It's just what I've noticed from trying to make deals happen with people. Everybody wants the most they possibly can get from every single sale. But when they're buying cards, want the least they possibly can get from every single purchase. And it's like, 
it's not, it's just this weird dynamic where like when I'm selling a car, the amount of terrible offers I get from people. And then when I'm trying to buy a car, everyone wants like to try and squeeze an extra hundred pounds out of me. And it's just like, makes no sense. So what I do on this app, and maybe it's just me, and maybe actually it's a reason why I miss out on a few deals here and there, is I don't mind accepting an offer if I just think it's a fair offer. I don't care about waiting another month to get another hundred pounds. I thought that was a fair offer, about nearly a thousand quid for, for this card, nearly a thousand pounds. Um, well, nine hundred and twelve pounds. I paid five hundred forty nine. Like to me, that's decent. That's good profit. I'm, I got three thresholds out of him and almost double my money. I'm really happy with that. I'm just trying not to be greedy when I when I do sales. And the same with like I sold Armani for the same thing. Like realistically, yeah, he's a bit. It was a bit under floor. Um, in terms of like ETH, like he's a little bit less than what I paid for him. I think I paid like point four five for him. But you know, like it's a card where I don't want Armani. Um, I bought Armani after seeing these amazing scores, and I was like, wow, you know, River Plate are on fire this season. But I quickly realized Armani's one of those goalkeepers where River Plate are so dominant. If he doesn't keep a clean sheet, it's very rare he gets really good AA. Like, he caps out at about 9 AA when they don't keep a clean sheet, right? Which, to me, is just pointless. I don't need a goalkeeper that caps out at 9 AA. If he doesn't get a clean sheet, he gets an orange or dark orange score, and that kills lineups. So, no thank you. Got rid of Armani, got rid of Drews, and brought in a few new players. So, we uh, we did buy Daniel, got him on auction. I paid with my credit card with this one, so that, like, I, I, I did get... Uh, a Daniel, who I think is a bit of a risky one, but when he does keep clean sheets, he gets banging scores. And to me, I think he's, he's Earthquake's best goalkeeper, so I hope he keeps the number one spot. Although it is a bit of a risky one, so we'll see what happens there. Um, so I was deciding for a long time which route to go for a defense defensive stack on so rare for the summer. Right now, I have three. Now I have Newell's Old Boys, Earthquakes, and I've now bought Houston Dynamo, but. It's a bit different. So Earthquakes and Newell's Old Boys, I purchased mainly for lesser lineups. They are designed for, if they have a good matchup only, I'll play them in a America Rare or All-Star Rare, right? Whereas Houston, the reason why I bought these cards, and I'll show you guys why I bought these cards, because th this is all the ho this is only home games for Houston Dynamo, right? For all of these players. This is only home games for Houston, Houston Dynamo, right? Like, these scores at home for all three of these players are crazy. Like Escobar seems to really be fitting in well at Houston Dynamo, having three scores in a row over 75 from AA alone, right? Uh, and obviously like the clean sheet, I think is essential here because he would have had a nearly 70 point score against the Sounders if they kept a clean sheet as well. Um, but he lost the 14 points from not keeping a clean sheet. So um, yeah, for me, like, this card is nuts, man. I think if he keeps up this form, he'll be absolutely nuts. I may have overpaid a little bit for him. I'm not going to lie. I may have I may have maybe overpaid a tiny bit for him. Um, I don't know who listed... Someone's already listed him up for way less. Who listed him up for that? What? Why would you list him up so... Oh, whatever. I definitely overpaid a little bit, but I got a bit excited. I can't lie. I don't mind overpaying sometimes. I got a bit excited and yeah, maybe maybe someone got a... And he just went on auction. Oh, I hate myself. Whatever, Ryan. Um, and then Stare as well, the exact same sort of thing. Like, he obviously gets goals and assists here and there, but he also has got the capability of getting some big boy AA scores, like 84... Uh, sorry, 82 from AA, like 63 from AA. Like, he, he's definitely a player that can get good AA or just get big boy scores. Um... So I like all three of these players at home. So that's why I went with my third and final sort of stack-ish uh, um, being Houston Dynamo. Now, the thing that, that actually tipped me over the edge, right? And you're going to think I'm a bit of a loser for this, but this is what tipped me over the edge. Um, <laughs> I've got three players from the 2019-2020 um, Let's Go Madrid player now. And I, I've got, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a collection guy, but like, I've got three of them now. So that's pretty cool. It's only a 1% bonus, right? And I might go and I might try and like clean up and get a few more players here if I can. I'm going to see if there's any like red X's. In fact, should we have a quick look? Surely Vitolo. Oh, there's none on the market. Are you joking? Are you joking? Um, Diego Costa, maybe? Is he, is he on the market? Cards on sale. Hang on. 19 pounds. I don't know if that gets me much. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to think about that one. Um, who else do I think would be like relatively cheap? Stefan Savage, maybe? What are we saying? 47 quid? Who does he play for these days? He still plays there, doesn't he? Um, I don't really know. I don't really know what to do here. 
What about Arias? He plays like, yeah, I was going to say, he plays for FC Cincinnati now, doesn't he? There's none on sale again. Whatever. All right, shut up, Ryan. I'm not even a, I'm not even one of those guys. I'm not even a collector kind of guy. But yeah, that's, that is kind of what tipped me over the edge. I can't lie. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of it. Now, what I do when I build lineups, typically, is I look in the future and kind of look to, like, what makes sense with my gallery. I try and make my gallery like Jenga, right? But the difference is, if I take a piece out, I can put another piece in. And that's kind of what I'm trying to build towards. And it's kind of what I did with um, Europe last year. And it's kind of what I'm doing now with uh, the summer. And my plan, hopefully, by the end of it, is to have a gallery where during the summer, I I've got five to eight lineups every week depending on international break of course because this week's a bit different and then during during europe i've got 10 to 15 lineups every week as well that's kind of what i'm going for and when i win cards the plan is to either slot them into other teams or sell them to buy other players that's kind of the way i'm going with it so uh i used a random like like game week 387 i used a random game week but like i'll show you what i mean by it right so like all-star rare pro we have a houston stack Champion America Rare Pro, we've got a Newell's Old Boy stack. Champion America Rare, we have got a uh, Earthquake stack. Like, that's kind of my thought process with it, right? Captain 40 Super Rare, we have got an Atlanta stack. So, like, that is kind of my thought process with it. And obviously, this is... Like, I don't actually think this is how I'm going to build my lineups this particular week or whatever because like Gerson or Gerson and Marlon have got well they actually don't have great matchups but well Marlon's got a decent matchup and Gerson's got an okay matchup but like yeah like they definitely will have more priority in different lineups for example and I'm still looking at like like there will be weeks where I mix and match for example Escobar might go into uh all-star rare pro alongside Tequino and then we go with like Heel and and Gerson as my two rares and then like Steve Clark in goal, for example, because I, I did that a lot last year with Europe. Like, if I go to, um, if I go to my gallery, I was already on it. I look at SO5 stats. What week did I win Kimmich, for example? Kimmich was game week 361. So, if I go to game week 361, right, because I had uh, different choices here, um, we would all start rare pro because I went with a Twente stack against Camber. When in reality, I also could have gone with the Napoli stack, for example. But I decided to put Kim and Jay in here with the Twente stack. So like that's kind of what I'm going for, right? Like it's interchangeable. I can I can go if we have an amazing matchup with Newell's old boys and they're heavily favoured to keep a clean sheet. We'll go with Newell's old boys. Um, Hoyos, and then maybe if Escobar's got a phenomenal uh, matchup as well against a terrible defense, but the, maybe they're not likely to keep a clean sheet. Maybe we go with like Hoyos, Escobar, Steres, right? Like that's kind of my thought process. And it, and you might think it's bad, to be fair. And if you do think it's bad, I'm, I'm, I'm more than open to criticism. I quite enjoy reading what you guys think because it helps me think differently as well. Um, so if you have any thoughts, if you think I've, I've messed up, then please let me know in the comments down below. But my plan now is probably not to... I don't think I'll buy anything... Like, like maybe if we less like the dream at the moment, I would love to to get a Cucho Hernandez, uh, and unless we win one, like I'm not going to put money in to buy one. But if we win, if we would a second Carlos Heel, for example, I'd sell it and buy a Cucho if I could afford it. Um, I I, I bring that up because if we'd have played Unestal last week, I would have won a Carlos Heel. Uh, but instead, I won Philip Com, which I'm not I'm not actually disappointed about. Um, if we win another goalkeeper, that makes sense. Maybe I keep that and sell a different goalkeeper, for example. Because, like, Walter is a, a decent goalkeeper. He's what he's one of the goalkeepers I've got at the moment, Walter, right? And, like, he's actually pretty decent, to be fair. Like, Walter keeps good AA against good teams a lot of the time. Uh, like, 58 AA against Corinthians. Or oh, 58 score, 22 AA against Corinthians is solid. And, like, 23 AA against Cruzeiro. And, like, you know, 11 AA against uh, Goyos. Like, he's actually a solid one for Cap 240 Rare, for example. Um... So yeah, like maybe maybe I win stuff and it makes sense to keep and sell other players, for example. That's kind of where I'm at at the moment with it. Um, the only, my only like risk downside that I have with my summer gallery is that I've kind of favoured older players. Most of my players here are quite old, right? We've got, I think everyone in that Champion America Rare Pro is 30 or older. I think the majority of them are actually 33 or older. All-Star Rare Pro, Steve Clark's 38. Steris is 33. Cicini's like 33. Hector Rare is like 33, 34. So, like, I probably only have, with this summer gallery, maybe after this season, one more season left with a lot of these cards. So, that's my only, like, downside. But I think next next year, maybe my, my strategy's different as well. Who knows? Maybe I've got a completely different gallery. Maybe I'm not even playing so rare. Who knows? So, yeah, that's kind of like... 
where I'm at with it. Um, but I'm happy. I'm really happy with the purchase we've made. I think the the gallery is looking good. Um, I think we've made some some good headway, and I think like as far as the summer goes now. I don't plan on making many more moves, if any. I think I'm kind of there now. I think the gallery is in a good spot, and and now it's just about playing the game and hopefully winning rewards and hopefully uh, leveling up and stuff like that. But if you guys have enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.